Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so glad you're joining me today. Oh, I'm running a little bit late and I do have to apologize. We actually had our first marching band event of this season. Claire finished up her marching band camp and they had a preview performance for parents tonight and so it went a little longer than I thought it was going to. But I do have two fun projects to share with you and a whole boatload of cards to share with you as well. So I've got lots of inspiration coming your way. Please say hello when you jump on. Let me know if you're watching live or watching the replay. Either way, I'm so glad that you're joining me. Thursday night stamp therapy is my weekly Facebook live where I share Stampin' Up! projects. I've been a demonstrator for 20 years. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to believe. In fact, just last week, I received my pin in the mail from Stampin' Up! Look at that cute little box. Oh my gosh, there it is. Is 20 years. That is so exciting. I love the way that Stampin' Up! celebrates us in little ways and big ways. It is just so much fun. So I feel like that celebration is just going to keep on going, right? <laughs> I, um, it was at the end of last month that I had my 20, 20th, I was going to say wedding anniversary, but we're, we're past 20 already. <laughs> my 20th Stampin' Anniversary. I know. Yay. Oh my goodness. Well, if you've been a demonstrator, leave a comment. Let me know how long have you been a demonstrator. And if you're not a demonstrator, you can just tell me how long have you been stamping? Um, we have a really great demonstrator special going on during celebration. I feel like I haven't really talked about it a whole lot, but if you've been thinking about joining as a demonstrator, you can join during celebration and get the Making Plans Collection, which is a really fun planner. It comes with a ton of stuff, some stickers, some notebooks, lots and lots of pages, like three times, four times what will actually fit into your planner. Um, the planner itself is just beautiful. And there's a special stamp set. So the only way you can get that is um, joining as a demonstrator before the end of August. So if you've been thinking about it, let me know. I'd love to chat with you about being on my team because we just have an amazing group of ladies all across the United States. I have to say we have a few men as well. <laughs> Well, I'm not talking about that tonight, but we are going to use some new celebration products. If you remember last week, I cased some um, projects from the catalog. Case means copy and share everything. And I'm always so inspired by the Stampin' Up! catalogs. I just think they have the most beautiful artwork, and I always am looking, looking through flagging pages. I'm sure your catalog looks the same way. Well, it's no different for celebration. So tonight, I'm going to... Oops, I better grab that again. <laughs> I'm going to make a couple projects. And the first one I'm going to case right here. Stylus Sketches is one of the gifts that you can get for free with a $50 order during celebration. And I have to say it was my last choice um, because I just don't love to color. You guys know <laughs> this isn't a surprise. I don't love to color. And so a stamp set with images to color I don't know. I don't know. But I do have some really fun samples to share. So this one is from Kim Peck. That's my upline. She's so amazing. Love the combination of the rustic harvest and the distressed gold. And a simple way to color here with a little background stamp and then stamping the outline over. Um, this one is from Debbie Gartway and she did a little coloring there. Looks like maybe some Stampin' Blends. That would be my guess. There's so many different ways you can color, right? Here's one from Donald Shevsky. She just didn't color at all. This is my kind of card. <laughs> and then this last one also doesn't have any coloring. This one's from Deb Snyder. Um, so I think these images look really great um, if, if you want to just do them in a solid color. But we are going to do some coloring tonight. I was inspired by this sample right here in the catalog. However, those colors don't really seem very foxy to me. Is, <laughs> is it just me? I don't know. I decided to bring in some more like natural colors, right? This is the, from the He's the Man suite. So we've got um, some designer paper from the He's the Man and I cut it down. I should have measured it for you. I'm so sorry. We'll do that real quick. Um, and then I also have a little die cut because this stamp set does not have any words in it. So we're going to use this die cut from the He's the Man, Strong and Courageous. Now, many of you know I've got some redheads in my family, including my husband. He's a redhead. And so Cajun craze always reminds me of the color of their hair. Um, and foxes are kind of red like Cajun craze. And so um, 
well, I have to just say my husband's a fox. <laughs> Um, so we're going to stamp a fox for Jim tonight, and I'm going to use my watercolor pencils. It's something I haven't used in a while. Let's set this aside. We'll bring it back out, and then we'll compare when we're all done. I used the deckled rectangles to um, to stamp the fox. <laughs> I'm seeing all your reactions coming through now. <laughs> oh, he is a fox. He, I love him so much. Okay. So for my foxy husband, we're stamping a fox with red, red hair, just like Jimmy. And we're going to stamp that in stays on ink because we're using the watercolor pencils. So stays on ink is, let me bring it back in here. It is a solvent ink. And this is the ink you want to use if you're going to do watercoloring or, um, you know, introduce water to all because it is a waterproof ink. Okay. So, um, we're going to use first the watercolor pencil. And then we actually have a couple assortments of watercolor pencils. This is assortment number two, which does include Cajun Craze. And so I'm going to just pick out that Cajun Craze one. And you know what? Our, um, our fox is going to be um, just one color, but I am going to use the um, the extra lines that Stampin' Up! has provided to add some shading to our fox. So first I'm just doing a layer of color and you could just do the, um, you could just use the uh, watercolor pencil like on its own and just leave it. Maybe you might color a little nicer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually going to use our blender pens to blend the color of the watercolor pencil. And then I'll go back and add some additional shading where the darker lines are. So the blender pens are like a glycerin pen and they, um, both, they have two sides, but they're both exactly the same. Um, and so you're just going to blend the color and then you could go back, um, and just kind of rub it off on scrap paper to get rid of the extra. Let me show you like just until it runs clean like that. So we're just gonna color all that in and you can kind of see it It really blends it and makes it nice and smooth. You don't see those um, pencil marks and pencil strokes. And so I'm gonna do that base color all around our fox and then we'll go back through and gonna do that on the back side since we're gonna cover it up and I go back through with a pencil and just sort of add some additional darker colors and I'm just going right along all those places in the stamp image where there is the extra marks so I love that our Stampin' Up! artists kind of make it easy to color by just following following the lines What do you think? I'm not an expert color, but I think I did pretty good. You could do a little more blending if you want. See, this is, this is my problem with coloring is I feel like I'm not very patient. <laughs> I'm just ready to go. I think that successful water coloring really takes a lot of layers and a lot of patience, both of which I don't have. <laughs> okay, I promised you some measurements. Let's do some quick measuring on this designer paper. I'll also include these measurements in the video description for you. Um, this is five and a half inches by three and a quarter. And then this piece is four inches by one inch. And just in case you're wondering which size deckled rectangle, this is three and a half by two and a quarter. And I'm not using watercolor paper. I'm actually using the very vanilla cardstock. Watercolor paper would be an excellent choice. And I don't know why I always forget about it. Um, the watercolor paper just takes water a lot better and blends really, really beautifully. So next time I'll try to remember the watercolor paper, but this time I just used um, the very vanilla. So you can just use regular Fairy Vanilla or Whisper White cardstock um, and it it works well. But watercolor, especially when you're introducing water with a water painter, the watercolor paper really is um, definitely ideal. Hey, did you know it's World Watercolor Month? Um, <laughs> Stampin' Up! keeps posting some images and a really fun video. I'll share them on Facebook if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I don't do a lot of watercolor, so it just like hasn't been on my radar. Well, let's do some layering. I do want to add a little bit of linen thread. I just love linen thread, so um, I feel like it 
it works on all kinds of cards, right? So I, when I buy linen thread, I buy several rolls at a time. That's how much I use it. <laughs> so I usually have a couple different, couple different rolls, but your package is only going to come with one. Um, although it will come with more than what's on there. Um, I think there are, you know, that's a good question. Let's check. You'll find linen thread in our annual catalog, May 2022 to August, or April 2023. And the linen thread is back here with the trim. Uh, it's right here. There's 15 yards. That was going to be my guess. 15 yards for the linen thread. Item number 104199. And you can um, shop in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. Oh, dear. Did I mess up again, Sherry? Thank you <laughs> for correcting me. Uh, our white cardstock used to be called Whisper White. And so for like, like, what, 18 years, I called it Whisper White. And then they changed it to Basic White. They actually changed the cardstock. This, oh, my scissors are like really locked up. This is weird. It's almost like they're jammed or something. Well, like I can't even close them. All right, I'm gonna figure that out later. Let's get out the baby scissors. Those will work for our linen thread. Um, anyway, <laughs> basic white, whisper white. Um, there is a difference. They, they are manufactured by a different paper mill. And so it is not the same kind of consistency that, um, that we had before with the Whisper White. The Whisper White was a very smooth, um, they used to call it in fact ultra smooth, um, but the Basic White is more of like almost a matte um, finish on it. It doesn't have the same smooth, smooth um, smoothness that the Whisper White did have. All right, I've got, I'm gonna just put that twine, um, kind of did like a figure eight thing going on behind the tag and oh no I just messed it up <laughs> sometimes you just need to stop fussing right I fuss too much and then I have to fix it okay let's give it a little trim stop fussing <laughs> um here let's go with some dimensionals on the back one two three <laughs> Marilyn, I saw your comment. Oh my goodness. You know, I was trying to use them for ribbon though. So that's how, that's how mom would tell me to use them. She would want me to use the, um, those big scissors for my linen thread. All right. This is going to go right in the center across the card. I do think these colors are just so much more, <laughs> so much more appropriate for the, um, for the fox, don't you think? Um, let's do some, you know, I'm just going to do regular adhesive. I was thinking about the dimensionals, but we have the words on the dimensionals, so we'll just stick with just that. It's going over here on the side, and then, <laughs> I see your comment, Eva. I know, sometimes I just fuss too much, don't I? Um, right down here, kind of over, overlapping. Oh, what do you think? I like the way that turned out. Let me bring the original back in here. I say the original, it's just in the brochure. I actually don't have it on hand. Um, but there's my version and there is the version in the celebration brochure. So I don't know. What do you think? They also used watercolor pencils. You can see them right here, coloring the fox. Um, and I used the same technique and the same deckled edge. I just kind of changed up the paper and did something a little bit different. Now I do, oh, I didn't cut it, but I do need to add something on the inside. I'll do that later on. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to, uh, do I, okay, I'm going to do something real quick. <laughs> let me, let me clean this stamp because I want to show you another thing that I was playing around with, which is really fun. Here's my cleaner. And we'll do that on the inside since there's not like, the other reason I struggle with stamp sets like this is because there are um, so few images and the images don't really match. There's like a fox and the, I mean, I guess the fox would go after the geese, right? And then like some kind of leaf acorn thing. Um, <laughs> let's cut a piece. Thank you. 
we're going to cut a piece for the inside. And again, this is the uh, very vanilla cardstock. Okay. And this time, we're going to stamp the fox in Cajun Craze ink. Because another way that you can color figs. Oh, thank you, Melissa. The other stamp is figs. That's interesting. Um, okay, the other way you can color is to use your blender pen. So I stamped in Cajun Craze ink, and this is a water-based dye ink. So I can use the blender pen to blend the color from the stamped image. So all I'm doing is coloring over the stamped image and sort of activating that ink and blending it around the image. So where there is more lines, there is naturally more ink. And so when I blend it, it'll be a little bit darker. So all that was, was an ink pad and a blender pen. So let's take a look at the difference here. So. This one is black, stays on with the watercolor pencils. And this one is the Cajun Craze ink. And for both of them, I used a blender pen to blend. I'm just gonna... Which way do you like it? Do you prefer the blender pen with the Cajun Craze ink? Or do you prefer the black outline with the colored pencil? Leave a comment, let me know which one you like. I'm going to go ahead and glue th this piece inside the card. And we're gonna move on and make another card. I will warn you, we're only gonna do two cards, but I have so many samples to share with you. Oops, this one is too short. I grabbed the wrong one when I cut. So I'm gonna turn this over. And bring it to five and a quarter. It's already got adhesive on it, so it's sticking. I was starting to say we're only going to do two cards tonight because I have a whole bunch of other cards to show you. So lots of inspiration. You do not want to go anywhere. <laughs> oh, it was crooked. I got to tear it up. Ah! I think I got it. Let's see. That looks better. Okay. Oh, yeah, Cindy says it seems a lot easier to just do the colored ink with the, um, with the blender pen. But a lot of you are saying the pencil, Lynn says the black outline, um, Margo likes both. Bonnie says black outline, Carol says black outline. Joe, you guys all seem to like the colored pencil one, Kay and Carol, um, and Janice and Penny. Yeah. <laughs> Most of you are seeing black outline. I do see a few of you that like the Cajun craze with the blender pen on the inside. I like the bowl too. I think you could go either way. In fact, here's the one I was playing around with. So that's kind of what it would look like on the front. Um, and the, so the black outline, I do think like sticks out a little bit more and um, you can see that coloring, coloring edge. All right. Well, that was our first card. Um, and I showed you the other samples using the Simply Sketch. Is that what that's called? Simply, simple Sketches? Stylish Sketches? Stylish. <laughs> Stylish Sketches. Um, our next card, we're going to use another Celebration stamp set. This one is the Amazing Phrasing. You can get this one for free with um, a $100 order. This is a level two stamp set because it's so big. It's like a double steam set. So you can see there's lots of stamps in here. And I think, I think all of these are actual size. You know what? Yes. Nope. 90%. It says right on there. So these are almost actual size. They're a little bit bigger in person than they are on the cover. And you, these are actual size on the inside. Okay, so this is a level one host set, not host set, a, a level, ah, oh my gosh, <laughs> a level two celebration gift. Um, let me show you some samples using the amazing phrasing. Um, 
But I, I just love these. This one's from Celine Kempton. And she used a couple patterns from another celebration gift, the Rings of Love. Here's one from Natalie Travis. And she used this silver and gold designer paper. And she um, brushed on with the blending brushes some colors. Use the tag there. This one is from Sandy Carlson. And she used the black and white designs, designer paper, which we're gonna use tonight. Here's a card that I created for my team celebration swap using the Rings of Love designer paper and then amazing phrasing for the sentiment. And I shared this one on Tuesday. This was from Karen Key, um, who sent this in for me for my birthday. Um, thank you so much, Karen. This card is just so gorgeous. She said she um, cased the design from Dina Recal. I love these colors together. Orchid Opulence, Bermuda Bay, and Parakeet Party. Well, I wanted to use some bright colors on my card tonight. And so I've picked out, um, I've picked out a layout. This is actually a layout that I used for my team. And I, I do a layout challenge twice a month with my team. And I post a layout for them to be inspired by and to create some cards with. Well, I actually was inspired by a layout in the catalog. Let me show it to you, see if I can find it really quick. Here it is. Uh, so this card kind of stuck in my head and I didn't really realize it <laughs> um, until I was looking back through the catalog, but I did make this card and I was very much inspired <laughs> by a solid piece of designer paper with a little um, kind of fray or a little edge coming out and then a, a stamp punched greeting. So this is the card that I created first and sort of was my inspiration for the sketch. But I, as I often do, used this layout to make some other cards too. So I made this one here with the um, uh, painted posies, I think it is, embossing folder, little rings of love designer paper on the side there. And then I also made this card for a team swap using the Rings of Love designer paper. Same punch as the first card, the new handmade tag punch, and the rings, the little tree rings embossing folder. So whether you have your little piece on the right side or the left side, or if your designer paper is a little skinnier, a little smaller, this is such a versatile layout. So we're going to use this layout to make a card tonight, and I'll put those measurements in the video description for you, but I need you guys to vote because I couldn't decide what pop of color to have on my card. And I know what you're going to say, just make one of each. So maybe we will. <laughs> Do you think I should use the parakeet party or the polished pink for our card tonight? I have two pieces of designer paper from the black and white designs. Let me show you this paper. It's really kind of fun. Um, the entire paper is black and white and gray. It's a 12 by 12 paper. Um, I just have some smaller pieces here. So every single design is black and white or black and gray. And so you can see like a lot of them are just the reverse on the other side. Really, really fun. This is sort of the paper that's supposed to be for Halloween, but it's not overly Halloween-y and I kind of love that. You can use that for lots of things. And so I really like black and white with a pop of color. And so we've got black and white with a pop of color. We're gonna have our little side tag be the black piece. And then we're gonna have a tag and the tag is gonna come across and have our woohoo. Uh, this card is gonna say woohoo, you did it, which I think can just go for so many different occasions. Okay, I'm looking through your comments and it looks pretty split. Almost every other one is something different. <laughs> polished pink and parakeet party. Parakeet, parakeet, polished pink, parakeet, polished pink, parakeet, parakeet. Ooh, maybe more parakeets. Polished pink, polished pink. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tony, just doing both. Oh, I do have the supplies cut. You are right. <laughs> I was prepared because I know you guys too well. So let's let's go ahead and do them both. We're going to start with the parakeet. It seems like it got some more votes. So we'll start with that one first. The one thing I forgot to bring over was some, um, I forgot to bring over ribbon. So I'm going to grab that really quick. I grabbed 
grabbed a couple different options. I grabbed this one, the white um, sparkly ribbon. And I think that one is going to be fun on either card. But I also brought out the, um, the in color metallic woven ribbon. And this is actually supposed to be for the sweet sorbet. But I think it goes pretty well with the um, with the polished pink, don't you guys think? That was the one color I really struggled with because I felt like it wasn't very sweet sorbet. I felt like it was more polished pink. So um, tell me what ribbon do you think? Should we use that white glittered ribbon? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of liking the pop of color with the metallic woven. So I think we'll stick with that. So let's do our stamping. Um, and then we'll do some gluing together and we'll, we'll use that ribbon. So I'm going to have to clean my stamps in between, but we're going to start with the big woohoo. And that is going to be in the, the bold color. And so we're going to do woohoo in parakeet party. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't used Parakeet Party a whole lot. This is such a really super bright color. Um, <laughs> I'm not used to, I'm not used to how bold and bright it is, but it's kind of fun. Um, I still haven't decided which in color is my favorite. Do you guys have a favorite in color? Um, so the in colors, just a reminder, are Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky. Mm, Starry Sky might be my favorite. It's such a gorgeous blue. All right, our next part is going to be in black. And so I'm going to use the Memento, ink, the Memento ink. Now, I used the Stays On ink earlier. And so I know a lot of times it can be confusing as to which black ink to use. Let me get this back out here. So we have Memento Ink. Whoop, excuse me. Memento Ink is a fade resistant dye ink. And this is going to be ideal for using your Stampin' Blends because Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers. And so if you use the alcohol markers with the, um, the dye based ink, then it won't blend the lines. Whereas if you're doing watercolor and you want to use the stays on ink because it's a solvent ink and water won't blend the lines. Um, so I mostly use memento ink unless I'm watercoloring and then I use stays on ink. Stays on ink being a solvent ink can be a little bit hard on your photopolymer stamps. Um, and so the memento ink is going to go on a lot smoother. It's not going to be sticky and it's not going to be a pain to clean. So the Memento ink is the one I use the most, especially if I'm just stamping black. But if you're watercoloring, stays on is the way to go. Okay, so we're stamping. You did it. Oh, we're definitely going to need some kind of embellishment down here, I think. We'll have to get our embellishment box out and see what we have. Oh, okay. So we're going to cut some ribbon for the bows. Oh, I'm sorry you're not feeling well, Christina. I'm glad you got to tune in for a little while, and I hope that you feel better soon. Oh, she says she can't stay awake. Oh my goodness, Christina, I don't know if she mentioned it in the comments already. Christina is a respiratory therapist, and um, I just, just got COVID, which I'm kind of impressed that you dealt with all of those patients in the last year and a half and um, have avoided it this long. Um, so I hope that you're feeling better, Christina. Please rest and take care of yourself. And hopefully those symptoms will be mild and you'll feel better really, really soon. Okay, I'm cutting two there. Whenever I'm tying, trying to figure out how much to cut, I will sort of like pretend to tie a bow and I kind of use that as my guide and then I cut that much ribbon. So that's what I was doing right there. I wasn't telling you, but that's what I was doing. <laughs> okay, let's, let's tie these on. And, um, yeah, two years of COVID and you just now got it. I think that's really amazing, Christina, like seriously, especially since you've been dealing with COVID patients like constantly. So amazing. You're amazing. Go get some rest, girl. <laughs> All right. We are, I like that color on there, especially because this is going to layer over the black and white paper. So I think having the pop of color on the ribbon is going to be just perfect. All right. Tying bows sometimes on camera, I swear. <laughs> it's so nerve wracking. I'm afraid I'm not going to do it right. Okay. So now I'm just going to trim 
trim those bows. This is such a great layout and is so versatile. Whether you're using a die cut tag like this or a punched label like I did on some of the other ones. Um, there's those other ones. Those are all punches. I was trying to grab this <laughs> to show you where the, ta the tag die came from. This is the tailor made tags. Um, and so there's kind of a straight edge and then sort of a curly edge there. So some different, different options. Let's do our simple layering here. I'm trying to decide. I think I'm going to do the chevron or the zigzag on the pink and the stars on the parakeet party. Let's do our simple, um, layering and then we'll do our tag with a glue dot. Stamp a dimensional not glue dot. <laughs> oh, okay. So um I was gonna say we'll have to do another this or that when I'm all done, and you'll have to tell me if you changed your mind at all. But probably you didn't, right? Like I think if you you either are a pink person or not, you're either a parakeet party person or you're not, so you probably won't change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think of this card layout? Is this one that you would make at home? Oh, and tell me if you have somebody to celebrate at home. This sentiment, woohoo, you did it, could be for so many things. It could be for someone who got a new job, for someone who graduated, for someone who, I don't know, was just going through a struggle and made it through, right? Woohoo! I always love to celebrate. Lots, lots of amazing things. And you know what? I actually need to send some cards to some team members for their amazing sales last month. We had over 14 people who sold more than $1,000 in June. Oh my gosh. I know. Isn't that amazing? They're so amazing. I have the best team. So I owe some people some cards and I have a little gift to send to them. I'm really excited about that. And one of the many projects I'm, <laughs> I'm working on, I feel like I'm just constantly juggling one thing and then another. Oh, I really love the way these turned out. Woohoo, you did it. Oh, this amazing phrasing is such a fun set. Have you guys gotten this one? Again, you can get it free with a $100 order during celebration, um, which ends August 31st. So we have another month left of celebration before it ends. It's hard to believe that it is already half over. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh. I was saying, and you guys, let me know. Do you think we need some more embellishments on here? Let's get out the box and see what we have. I feel like we gotta have something. Oh, well, you know what I really would love is something in the same like color grouping. So there's the polished pink dots. We could use those for sure. And here's some of the, um, of the parakeet party dots. I also pulled out this, and I think this color is supposed to be sweet sorbet in the seasonal sequins, but it kind of looks like, oh, I think it kind of looks like um, polished pink. Don't you think so? I'm going to use them. <laughs> I, I really like the sequins because they're so bold and bright. And we always talk about odd numbers, so I'm gonna do five sequins. Just trying to figure out the positioning. <laughs> Isn't this the hardest part? <laughs> Is coming up with with the right positioning on your card. Oh my gosh. Okay, these sequins though are definitely the way to go. Look how fun that is with that pop of color on the black. Okay, so that was the seasonal sequins. I really wish that they had um, 
really wish that they had some parakeet party in here, but we do have some really great parakeet party gems in this package. This is the 2022-2024 in color matte decorative dots. So we're going to add some of these. These are all sort of that um, the ombre, right? Where you have um, some lighter ones and some darker ones. I prefer personally the um, the darker color. I wish the whole package was the darker color, um, but Stampin' Up! didn't consult with me, so. <laughs> um, I do feel like we're going to do five again. I really think it needs, it needs five. Okay. Did it change? Do you still love the same color or did you change your mind? Parakeet Party or um, Polished Pink? Leave a comment, let me know. This was the last card that we're gonna make because I have a whole bucket of birthday cards to share with you. So let's move on to that. Oh my gosh, I hope that you liked the cards that I shared. I'm gonna share the uh, measurements in the video description. Oh my gosh, yes, I just saw your comment, Mary. They do look like candy dots. Do you guys remember eating? <laughs> Do not eat these. Okay, guys, <laughs> there should be a warning. They do like like the, the kind of candy dots we used to eat, but don't eat them. <laughs> put a warning in my video, not for human consumption, um, <laughs> just for paper crafting consumption. <laughs> okay, so uh, we did the fox and we did the, um, the woohoo cards, and hopefully you're inspired to make either one um, or both at home. I always love it when you guys send me your version of the cards that we do. I think it's so much fun. Um, okay, well, I've got a bunch of cards to share with you, and some of them are repeats of the cards that I already shared during the Great Big Card Swap. So I'm going to start with those. Um, if you're not familiar, the Great Big Card Swap, surely you're familiar, right? I do the um, Great Big Card Swap Showcase every other um, week. It's like the second and fourth Tuesday of the month and um, people send in cards and then I share them all in the video and then, then I send them back to everybody. Well, some people send in duplicate cards and they sent an extra for me. It is just the sweetest thing and it always makes my day to get an extra card because so many of these cards are gorgeous and I want to keep them, but I have to send them back out because everyone who sends a card gets one back. So these were doubles that I got during the Great Big Card Swap. I just wanted to show them off again and give everybody one more shout out. So this one is from Janice McCollum and this one is from Roz Mansi. I love those teacups. This one's from Karen Fletcher. It has a fun opening. Isn't that fun? I love that how it goes up and then over. This is a pansy patch designer paper. Here's one from Joe Williams with the rustic harvest. Oh, I love that. And then some room to write on the back panel there. This one is from Myrtle Thorn. I love that twist gate fold. I'll have to put the link in the video description so you can learn how to make this card. It's a lot easier than it looks and it's so much fun to make. And then this one is from Alita Williams. I love this. Alita did a slightly different version for the great big card swap using the butterfly kisses designer paper and this is the one that she sent for me. Thank you guys so much for those awesome cards. Like I said, it is just such a treat to get uh, devils and get to keep them. All right, I'm just going to break these up into little piles in no particular order. Most of these are birthday cards because I celebrated my birthday earlier this month. This one's from Lori Schott. I love this with a washi tape and doing the different size layers all the way up. I think that's just such a fun way to use the washi tape and to show off coordinating patterns. Oh, look at this gorgeous card from Nadine Kunha using the peony stamp and coloring that in. Such a beautiful job coloring Nadine. Thank you so much for this gorgeous card. A little Highland Heather here and then this um, well-worn, well-worn, um, oh gosh, what is the name of this background? It is like one of my favorites. It just retired last year and the name is Tasteful Textile. Tasteful textile. I love that one. Um, here's one. I recognize this layout. Another card from Myrtle. You're so kind, Myrtle. <laughs> and Myrtle sent me some extra stamps. Thank you so, so much um, for that. 
that treat. That's what came in this card. This is the Double Wonder card layouts with Rococo Rose, and I loved this designer paper when it was the catalog. Thank you, Myrtle, for sending that, and for all the extra stamps. You are the best. Here's a Make a Splash card from Linda Vanderspool. Oh, I love this. A little Link of Stella on that bathing suit. A yellow polka dot bikini. It's not really a bikini. It's one piece, but <laughs> such a fun card for summer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Linda. Here's a card from Barbara Gamez, who sent a thank you card for something I sent her. That was just so sweet. I love this. It's a large background stamp, the Daisy Garden. And that's the same embossing folder. Um, as the one on this card. That's the tasteful textile. So I love the look of stamping and coloring and then embossing over the top. I just think it adds such a fun texture to the card. Thank you so much, Barbara, for your card and your note inside. Oh, here's a blast from the past. You guys remember this stamp set? I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Vicki said in her note. Let's take a look. This one is from Vicki Stuckymeyer and she um, she said the markers from 2003 still work and oldie, but a goodie from 20, um, from 2006. <laughs> so she colored on the stamp and then used the huff method to, um, re-moisten the ink before stamping. I cannot remember the name of this stamp set, but oh my gosh, I remember using it probably like, well, I guess she said 2006. So yeah, that makes sense. That'd be about 15, um, 15 years ago. I'm not doing my math right. 16 years ago? Oh my gosh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> Here's a card from Barb Price, another team member who used the wonderful world designer paper. I love this. She said if she runs out of envelopes for her note cards, that she just puts the note card right on top of a card base. How clever is that? Sometimes I do that where I just feel like I run out of the envelopes somehow sooner or I use an envelope for something else. So I thought this was a clever idea using that note card right there on a regular piece of card base to stick it in a regular envelope. Love this card too, Barbara. Thank you so much. This is the rectangular postage punch that's punched out a piece of the designer paper and it coordinates so well with that image in the background. Barb, you're the best. Thank you so much for that. More cards, more cards. Oh my gosh, you guys. Spoil me. I feel so spoiled. This one is so fun. This is from um, Jill, who came to visit and on her way to Champaign, she stopped in Casey, Illinois. And if you're from Illinois, or if you are ever coming through, Casey is about an hour south of Champaign. And it is a small town home to many of the world's biggest. And so one of the world's largest that is in Casey is the world's largest mailbox. And you can mail something in the world's largest mailbox. And so they have this, um, this postage, um, what's the word I'm looking for? cancellation stamp postmark. Um, and so Jill went to the Casey post office and had them um, postmark this paper that she used to make me a card. And so she was there just the day before my birthday. So that was so much, so much fun. I just thought that was so clever. So if you ever get over here to Illinois, check out Casey and all the world's largest. And if you've been to Casey, then you have to tell me what is your favorite of all the world's largest that they have. They've got the wind chimes, they've got rocking chair, they've got knitting needles, they've got a pitchfork, a golf tee, the mailbox. Uh, it is just, it is so much fun um, to visit. So if you ever get a chance, definitely check out Casey, Illinois. Um, next up is a card from Judy Howard. Oh, another blast in the past with this designer paper and the stamps. So much fun. I love these bright colors. Very summery and Judy's <laughs> uh, trademark deckled edge. I always love getting your cards, Judy. Thank you so much for sending this one. Oh, look at this gorgeousness. This is from Shark Cooper. A little birthday card using the Sun Prince Suite and the Nature's Print stamp set. Just so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love this. Knight of Navy in white. So, so classic beautiful card chart. Thank you. Check out this one. This is from Beth Bryce. I'm loving these bright colors. Do you guys remember this? This was a stamp set that was available during celebration a year or two ago. And it is a combination of two stamps, the, um, the lines, and then also the splatters to look like candles. I love this color combination. Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, and Granny Apple Green. Maybe old olive there. 
Oh, just such a fun card. Thank you so much, Beth, for that, that beautiful birthday card. Here's one from Karen Karras. I hope I got it right, Karras. Um, just such a beautiful card. I love this um, fine, fine art floral designer paper and the layering here and those brass butterflies. Oh my gosh. I just love those little butterflies. If you don't have them, you definitely need to add a package to your next order. I like that they're flat. And so when you're sending cards in the mail and they don't really cause a lot of bumps and issues. So thank you so much for this card. Um, it's so wonderful to, um, to get your message and read your note inside too. Um, next up is a card from, oh, Susie Sherwin. <laughs> this is so much fun. Susie is a new um, swapper for the Great Big Card Swap, and she sent an extra birthday card for me. So thank you so much, Susie. I enjoyed reading your note inside. This is the Shaded Summer stamp set with the Design a Daydream designer paper from the Host set um, in the annual catalog. Next up is a card from Carol Alanis using the Flowing Flowers stamp set that retired just in the spring from the January through June mini catalog. This one was really gorgeous, the distinctive um, stamp set. Like the layering here on Coastal Cabana with the Heart and Home designer paper, the wood green in the background. Oh my goodness, Carol, thank you so much. It means so much to me that you um, took the time to make me a card. I know you've been going through a lot and um, and I really... I really was touched that you sent a card. This one is from Carrie Zacharias. And uh, if I'm remembering right, there was a little something tucked inside there, Carrie, which you shouldn't have. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie. I'm going to send you a little thank you card for that uh, that little gift. that You were too, too kind. This is the Expressions in Ink designer paper um, that just retired from the annual catalog. In this spring, again, beautiful colors here. Pale papaya, uh, granny apple green, polished pink. Just gorgeous. I love it so much. A little book binding fold there. Um, we're still not done. <laughs> there are so many cards. Let me get the last bunch. I think this is the last grouping of cards. I This is from the last two weeks. I just feel so blessed, you guys. Thank you so much for all these gorgeous cards. This one is from Lori Helvick using that split texture card dies and the a Wash and Beauty stamp set. Charming sentiments up there uh, with the Parakeet Party and the Melon Mambo. So gorgeous. I love this, Lori. I miss seeing you so much. Thank you for sending this card. I hope I can get to see you again really, really soon. Next up is a card from Eva White. This one just makes my day. This uh, designer paper sweet symmetry was one of my favorite in the last catalog and I just love everything about this. I love the glitter. I love the foil. I love the ribbon. I love the vellum circle. I love the embellishments <laughs> and and uh, Eva also gave me a little um, package of some chocolates. It had some Hershey nuggets in there, which I quickly ate. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I just, I wasn't very patient to show you. I love the Hues of Happiness designer paper on this really simple design. Um, it was such a birthday treat. Um, thank you. Thank you, Eva. <laughs> Next up is a card from Georgia Chase. Love the glitter paper that she used to die cut the happy birthday on this really awesome happy birthday embossing folder. So simple, but I love the pop of colors with the gems. Such a great card. Thank you so much, Georgia. Next up is a card from Kathy Bradley. Look at the detail on this geranium card. Oh my goodness. This is a bundle that I think I got, but I have done nothing with. So I appreciate your inspiration, Kathy. Thank you so much for sending this beautiful card and spending so much time to add um, so many details to it. It really is just gorgeous. I love these detailed die cuts and a little twine and the um, elegant gems on the um, on the embossing folder. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Here is a card from Beth Koheiser, and she used one of my favorite layouts here. I love this with the um, oh, ornate floral embossing folder, and then the um, blah, 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 hand penned floral designer paper. Just such a great, easy layout. Two panels that are two by four inches, maybe two and a half inches by four inches, and then a little one by four inch strip with a punched label. Oh, you can substitute any designer paper um, and create um, something similar. So, so beautiful. And a little embellishment on the inside, Beth. Thank 
thank you. And Beth also sent back some cello bags and cardboard and uh, my post office. I'm sure you guys notice if you've ever received anything from me, especially non-machinable, my post office does not postmark things. <laughs> and so Beth had a lot of unpostmarked stamps that she sent back to me. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why they don't postmark the non-machinable stuff, but it always comes through. <laughs> like I get stuff, but I, I know whenever people receive from stuff from me, I always hear that it's never postmarked. Uh, this is a fun card. This is from Carol Alana's another card and it's a slide off with this fun, um, fun card. I just love the angle on that. And, um, so gorgeous with the, um, designer paper. This is the peach paper. Um, what was it called? Um, you're a peach, I think maybe designer paper. And this one is from the Awash and Beauty designer paper, a new one. So gorgeous. A little belly band fits around that card. I've really got to try out the measurements for this card. I think it's just so much fun. Thank you so much, Carol, for this gorgeous card and the congratulations on my anniversary. It just makes, made my day to get your beautiful card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last card is from Judy K. Meek, who sent this one, the basket of happiness stamps that I love, the little craft supplies and the little kitty cat inspired by you. Um, your your message inside, Judy, just made my day. Thank you so much for, for watching and for following and all of you for being part of my stamping community. Um, I get the opportunity to share because you guys are watching. <laughs> I don't know that I would keep sharing if no one was on the other end because that's that's part of sharing is um you know being able to inspire and um and help others find creativity and inspiration. So thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the receiving end. I hope that you are inspired by the cards I shared tonight, all of the cards I've received and the cards that we made. We did two different cards with the amazing phrasing. Sam Satin also used the stylish sketches. These are all celebration gifts that you can get for free during celebration, which ends August 31st. So if you want to get any of these celebration gifts, you can shop in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. I'll put a shopping list in the video description when I'm all done that will include all the supplies that I use tonight. So if you want to remake any of these cards, um, you can find that list in the video description. Just give me 10 or 15 minutes or so. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in tonight. Be sure to watch tomorrow on YouTube at 1 p.m. Central Time. My 12 Days of Christmas gift box um, reveals are continuing. We're on day five of tomorrow. And I can't wait to show you what is inside that gift package. Have a great evening and happy stamping. Bye-bye.